So I want to look at um, ankle mobility on the MoFlex, okay? And the first thing I want to do is pretty much just a calf Achilles stretch on it because later I'm going to go into be doing some A skips or high knee skipping for that speed and develop, speed and power development. The way I'm going to do that is just bring simply bring both feet, both toes up on this MoFlex. If I need to regress back, make it easier, I can come on this lower level of the MoFlex. Make it more difficult, bring the feet up higher. And it's kind of nice to have something to hold on to for their balance, because if they don't have a lot of that um, mobility of their ankles, they, they, they kind of will just sit back on it. But this allows them to drive those hips forward and get more of a stretch on that Achilles and calf gastrocnemius soleus muscle there. This is going to be ankle mobility on the MoFlex. And I want to start simply with one foot up. And I'm going to just drive that knee forward. Heel down and get some good ankle mobility by driving that knee forward. It helps if you put some weight on that front foot. Sometimes you'll see clients kind of back off on it. But just watch that. You'll get a lot more movement and effectiveness out of it by putting some good weight into that front foot. Now, if they want to hold on to something, that's fine. But this one you can do without holding on to something. The other part of this is having, getting that foot up on there and then same position, but now I'm going to rock or move my foot from side to side. Okay, so now we're getting mobility in that direction, the lateral side, the medial side. What you want to avoid is kind of the tibia, foot, ankle moving as one unit. Okay, and we want to avoid that. We want to get it to where there's where there's a spiral effect on the tibia. Of course my foot's gonna move, of course my leg's gonna move, but I'm not moving like this as one unit. If you do it, if you if you notice when I do it correctly or you would be able to see when you do it yourselves or with your clients, the tibia is going into a spiral action. Then you know you've got that, the, the correct movement on. This is gonna be foot mobilization with the Blackboard device, not ankle mobilization that we just showed you on the MoFlex, but foot mobilization. And you wanna have the Blackboard set up where you have this, the smaller, a dowel in the center on the heel piece and then these two horizontal pieces on the forefoot. What we're trying to get on this is the forefoot staying stationary on this blackboard and then the heel is going to be moving independently of that forefoot. So that's what we're looking for on this exercise. So mobilization of that foot, getting good dis disassociation between the heel and the forefoot. So it'll look like this. Okay, weight on it, and I'm gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna flick that heel. So you can see where that heel is moving a little bit more independently than my forefoot. Of course my, of course my forefoot's gonna move a little bit. Okay, but it's, again, it's not doing something like this where it's working as one unit. Now I wanna get some weight on there. If I back up on back off on it, not getting some weight on there, not nearly as effective. Weight on there and get that heel to move side to side for that foot mobilization on the blackboard device. The heel piece is gonna have these two uh, small pieces going um, parallel with the, the heel part of the, of, the, of the blackboard and then one center piece like that. So that's the setup for foot activation. I'm going to go here, balance on it. So one thing you'll have to notice with your clients is that they're, sometimes they'll set their foot too far back, but you want it forward enough, again, where there's some disassociation between the heel and the forefoot. But the activation part of it is simply just balancing on it, okay? So, so now that forefoot is really getting some activa activating movement, okay? It's really, it's really firing up those motor neurons on that forefoot, now, of course, this is a balance exercise, but I don't like to tell people that it's, that it's balanced, but it's foot activation. So, 
they'll struggle with it because it's quite challenging, challenging, but I tell them that's okay. It's the actual um, effort of balancing or the effort of doing it that's really getting that foot to fire, activating that foot. So that's the foot activation on the blackboard. It can be done with a shoe on. Um, if you don't want people to take their shoes on and off because it just disrupts the, the training maybe, but uh, it, is, it is more effective with the um, shoe off. Same thing with what we showed earlier with the foot mobilization. It's probably better with the shoe off, but sometimes when I'm with clients, I just have them do it with their, their shoe on, on both of these. This is more activation of the foot using the MoFlex. I wanna place my, I wanna go in between the ball of my foot and my big toe on the top part of the MoFlex. Okay, so I don't want to be all the way on my on the ball of my foot, nor do I want to be on the, all the way on my toe. I just I simply won't be able to hold it. So something in between. Then I want to have this part of my foot flat as possible, not the heel down, not the heel up. So try to have it flat, and just hold that for 20 to 30 seconds driving that toe into the MoFlex. After I'm holding that for 20 to 30 seconds, I'm gonna do some small, small little pulses like this, like 10 times, and then go back into that horizontal flat position, holding that for another 20 to 30 seconds, which is pretty challenging, and then go back into 10 more small pulses. Okay, that's for foot activation, and it's gonna look like doing calf raises, but I'm really not. If I wanna go do calf raises later, where I'm getting full range of motion, that's great, that's fine, you should probably do that. But I just wanted to show that for, for uh, foot activation with the MoFlex, it's a really good combination with the foot activation on the blackboard. With creating speed and power in older adults, we also want to work on building up elasticity in the foot and ankle and the lower leg, the gastrocnemius and the soleus. Primarily how we want to do that is work the, work the class two lever system in the foot. There's two basic lever systems in the foot. The first one would be class one, which is kind of a, like fun jumping with keeping my heels on the ground. Okay, like that could be a look like, like a plyometric, an easy plyometric, but I'm keeping my heels on the ground. That would be a class one lever system. We primarily want to work the class two lever system, which is the heels off the, off the ground. So if I do something like that, where I'm just springing off the balls of my feet, keeping my heels off the ground, that's a class two lever system. That's what we really want to build up in, in our clients to build up that elasticity that we lose through the aging process. Because that goes really well with developing speed and power. Um, so having both really, really helps in our ability to walk um, and to be kind of be explosive and, and dynamic in our walking. So the other thing it does too is when you're working the class two lever system, you're developing and creating a stronger base of the foot. We're creating there's three, those three arches in the bottom of the feet. We're working those three, those three arches, the muscles and the tendons uh, and the ligaments on, on uh, the bottom. Heel taps are a really good exercise to start working with, um, to start helping develop the, the springiness um, of the foot and the ankle. So the way that that's gonna be done is you wanna go into a staggered stance, okay? And it's the, the, the the easiest one part of it, or the easiest um, part of this series is with the is using the back foot. So I'm gonna do a heel tap with the back foot. Okay, so it'll look like this. So I'm trying to really get that heel to go up and down as quickly as I can and tapping it to the floor. It's almost like a reflex fill. It's not mechanical of driving the foot down. It's not that at all. It's got this responsive movement to it. The next uh, progression to that would be the foot forward and heel taps, okay? So I've got my foot forward and I'm doing the same thing, getting that reflexive feel 
of tapping the heel down to the floor. I want to get some weight on that leg as I'm doing it. I don't want to back off on it. I got to really load that leg up and get that reflexive movement on those heel taps. That one's a little more challenging than with the foot back. Now, the third one, which is really quite difficult, I'm not quite sure you'll be using it a whole lot with your clients, but I'm going to show you anyway, is doing it now with a balance component to it where the back foot is off the floor, so you're just on one leg getting those heel taps. Okay? And then what I do from there is add um, what I call springy jumps or mini jumps. And it's just simply on the balls of your feet and being as springy as you can off the balls of your feet. It helps to keep the rest of your body rigid here. I even have clients kind of close their, make a big fist, tighten their arms, and really spring off the balls of your feet. Um, you know, what we're trying to, a good example of what that, uh, what that's, what that looks like is think of a, a deer um, that bounds as it's going through the forest or whatever. But th that's, the, that's, the, that's the idea of having a lot of elasticity um, in us. And, and, and having that example of a deer bounding is something that we um, are born with, that we have, we just lose it because we don't use it. But this is a way that we can gain, gain that. I'm gonna show you here to help um, bring back the elasticity in the lower leg are what I call mini jumps. Um, and, and think about what we're trying to do to develop more elasticity in our lower extremity is think about a deer and how springy they are. Like when they're bounding, when they're you know bounding through the forest, they're just super springy, okay? We wanna gain that back the best we can. We lose it because we don't ever use it. But the way these mini jumps, what they look like, again, this is working a class two lever system. And it's also, because of the nature of the class two lever, lever system, it's working the three arches in the bottom of our, of our feet, okay? So it's simply just standing here, nice, good, tall posture, and uh, bouncing and being ref uh, having a lot of reflexiveness off the bottom of our feet. Okay, so I'm just doing these rapid mini jumps right off the balls of my feet. I'm not bending my knees much, I'm keeping my torso tight, I'm even keeping my arms tight and rigid as I get that springiness going. Um, it's a great way, good exercise to do, and almost all your clients here is uh, what I call sprinter arms on the functional trainer. And it's a great exercise to, develop, to start to develop speed with the upper extremities, so with the arms. We know we need that quickness in our arms um, to, to help us recover from a stumble. It's what helps us kind of counterbalance ourselves. So this is gonna be in a linear fashion, but just keep in mind, even though we're doing a fast movement in a linear uh, direction, it's still gonna translate into the move your arms quickly in all directions. We just have to develop or create that, that quickness and speed in our, in, our, um, in our arms. Put the functional trainer arms at number two, not one, but number two, so it flares out a little bit. I'm gonna put the resistance on, I think for women, about a three or a four, and then for men, maybe four or five or six. Maybe a little heavier than that if they're pretty strong, but you don't need to go heavy on this. We're looking for speed and power. So I am gonna grasp the handles like this. I'm gonna grasp the nylon straps like that in both arms. I'm going to put my feet hip width apart, and I'm gonna move my arms like a sprinter like this. Once my arm is in this position, I'm gonna be acts as if it's in a cast. I can't move my elbow but I can come from the shoulders. That's what I'm looking for, is coming from the shoulders and moving in that direction. So I'm gonna show you, so I'm gonna, what I'm gonna have to do is just go as quickly as they can for maybe six or seven seconds. Rest, I'll rest for maybe 15, 20 in this position, and then maybe do it two or three more times. Go do something else. 
and then maybe I'll come back to that. Now, another important thing is what I like about that is as I'm bringing my arms back, I'm creating a nice, I'm opening up that thoracic spine a little bit. So there's some thoracic spine mobility if you let them have a free movement of that T-spine or shoulders as they're doing it, but maintaining rigidity. This is the um, partial power squat off the functional trainer. And you want to put the uh, arms on number two so there's a little bit of a flare out. And the movement is, you know, squat, you know, squat position, feet shoulder width apart, hip width apart. And the movement is just a partial squat here and then coming up fast, getting that hip extension. That's the important part of this, of this movement. And um, with, a, with a speed and power element to it, it's great for functional movement in older adults and whatever they're gonna do in life. Climbing stairs, getting out of a, getting out of a chair, walking at fast speeds. So <clears throat> what it looks like is this here, and then coming up fast, okay? If you notice, I'm giving a little bit of a pull with my arms. That's just to allow some rhythm to this movement. If I keep my arms straight, it just doesn't feel, it just doesn't feel as good. So I just give a little bit of a pull with those arms. And the other thing you want to keep in mind is to keep the contraction um, tight in the core on the way down and on the way up. Oftentimes they may kind of let go of the contraction here as they descend, but just um, reinforce the idea of keeping that contraction there as you're going down and up. Now, another thing you can add to it is, is you can have them a little bit on the balls of their feet, okay? Because then having them on the balls of their feet will just add more to developing the springiness in the foot and ankle and creating more of that um, contraction or development of the three arches on the bottom of the foot. This is the uh, power pull. So it's a simply single arm pull with a functional trainer. I'm gonna put this on the number seven marking with that arm pretty much just horizontally out. I'm going to grab the handle. I'm gonna stagger my feet and palms gonna be down. I'm gonna give just a quarter turn as I pull in. But what I wanna do here is I wanna pull back pretty quickly and when I bring it back this way, I don't have to worry so much about being quick on that part. It's mostly the, contra the concentric contraction that I want to be quick on with some power. But I do want to give a little bit of rotation I, if I can. I don't need to be super static with it. I like having a little bit of that rotation because it makes it just a little bit more dynamic. And again, it kind of gets a little bit more of that thoracic spine mobility. So that's the uh, power pull on the Kaiser Functional Trainer. Well, this is going to be the uh, power push on the Kaiser Functional Trainer. So same thing with the power pull, I wanna put this on number seven so that it's horizontal. I'm going to, um, again, stagger my foot position. I want my elbow right behind my wrist. I wanna be careful not to open that up to safeguard my shoulder joint. So elbow behind the, the, the wrist and I'm going to push out, come back slowly. Push out fast, come back slowly. Again, I can have a little bit of rotation in my upper body and use that kind of dynamic movement to make it more of a powerful movement. Now, again, you're gonna get some clients that just don't have that kind of athletic feel or ability to move that way, so it may look something more like, more static. That's fine, but just try to get them to push that out with some speed and power. That is the power push on the uh, Kaiser Functional Trainer.